which could lead to chaos on Earth. The four outer planets of our solar system are all encircled by rings, some dazzling, some dusty, some remarkably faint. Yet the quest is on for one more, the most distant of all, encircling a frigid rock called Pluto. Once considered to be a genuine planet, it was reclassified as a dwarf planet in 2006. In 2015, it may become the newest member of our solar system found to have rings. Pluto might have rings, very faint rings, or may someday gain rings, because Pluto is in a region where there are lots of comets floating around. And if one of them gets close to Pluto, it might get tidally shattered by Pluto's gravity, temporarily forming a ring. A mission called New Horizons is already a third of the way to a rendezvous with Pluto. The images it transmits in 2015 should reveal if the distant dwarf has rings. Yet ring hunters recently expected to find a new ring system much closer. On Earth's nearest neighbor, Mars. There's long been speculation that Mars might have a ring system. It goes actually back to the 1970s. And part of the reasoning now is that everywhere we look in the solar system that we see small satellites, there is a faint ring associated with them. Two small satellites, or moons, orbit Mars. Though each is less than 20 miles wide, astronomers believed enough dust came off these moons to form a faint ring. They must be producing clouds of dust. We know that for certain. And the only question is, when and how does that form into a ring? Yet when they trained the powerful Hubble telescope on Mars in the 21st century, they saw nothing. We've looked twice now, and we have not seen anything. So we're beginning to get a little bit puzzled as to why there are no rings of Mars. The Earth itself once had a ring. Giant chunks of red-hot rock whizzed around the planet for at least a few years, and then vanished. How could that have been? Four and a half billion years ago, when the Earth had just formed, a giant body the size of Mars smashed into our planet. And that formed a temporary ring that was even more spectacular than Saturn's is today in the sense that it was not just a big, thick ring, very massive, but it was glowing red hot. As the molten rock cooled, some was thrown back to Earth and some flew out into space. The rest of the material condensed into a sphere that became our moon. But Earthlings don't need to feel left out. Our home planet has a new ring, and this one is just 50 years old. It's not made of dust or icy rock, but metals and silicon. It's a ring of satellites. The Earth has built itself a highly technologically complicated ring of satellites that will last for millions of years. Comprised of some 400 satellites, it's the only known ring created by life in the universe. It hovers 22,000 miles above the Earth's equator in a geosynchronous orbit where their speed will hold them in exactly the same spot over the planet indefinitely. So the geosynchronous satellites are this very special sort of subcategory of satellites and they form a true ring around the Earth. And it's a ring in the sense that they are orbiting particles that are continuously falling around the Earth, much the same way as Saturn's ring is gravel-like icy particles that are all falling around Saturn. Earth's ring is a critical component to human communications, but it's heading for disaster. And what we know in ring studies is that if you put enough things in one place and they're gonna start colliding. In fact, in February of 2009, two satellites in a low Earth orbit did collide. 
The crash sent shockwaves through governments and the scientific community around the world. We had two large satellites and they collided. They blew themselves to smithereens and we now have maybe 10,000 objects all in orbit around the Earth. Each of those is a bullet and each of those is moving perhaps at uh, 10 miles per second. And any one of those has the capacity to take out another satellite should another collision occur. Each new satellite in the geosynchronous orbit is like adding a race car to the track. Every one increases the danger of a collision. If two collide, the flying debris could destroy the entire ring, throwing communications on Earth into chaos. Eventually, it will just be an unsafe place to put anything because you've got swarms of bullets flying past you all the time. Whether artificial or natural, ring hunters continue to pursue the prized bands because they're one of the most essential forms of the universe. Without them spinning into galaxies, solar systems, and planets, life as we know it would not exist. Rings, it turns out, are the beginning of what is possible. It is true that we go billions of miles out to try to see what's out there, but it's because it tells us how we formed, what our own backyard is like, what our solar system is like. We learn more about what's possible in other worlds. We learn more about what's possible here on Earth.